Greetings from the world headquarters of the United Pentecostal Church International in St. Louis, Missouri, USA. I think it's important to talk to you today about what's going on in our world, particularly the pandemic of the coronavirus. I know there's much uncertainty. We're all concerned. We're concerned about our health. Um, we're concerned about the economy. We're concerned about the effect on churches and church gatherings. So let's talk about this from a scriptural perspective. What should the church do in a time of crisis like this? And first of all, I would say we've got to trust God and pray. We move from fear to faith. We move from panic to peace. We replace worry with prayer. Let me read you what the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. He said, and this is in Philippians 4, 5 through 7, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So we need to ask God to protect us, for God to heal us, for God to supply our needs, both individually and uh, and our church. If this crisis goes on for some time, it's going to affect the economy. It already has. But that's where we go to God and ask for his supply. In scripture, we find that the prayers of one person can make a big difference. In Genesis 18, Abraham interceded for Lot, and Lot was delivered from the destruction of Sodom. Abraham also interceded for the city, and God said he would spare the city if there were only a few righteous people. So I believe that one apostolic church in a city can go to God in prayer and change the destiny of that city. And the Bible does tell us in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 that when a pestilence or a plague comes, that we're to pray and God will save our nation, will heal our land, will forgive our sins. And so we find many examples throughout scripture where prayer makes a difference. So first of all, let's pray. And let's pray for our governmental leaders that God will give them wisdom to make the best decisions. And that brings the second point. It is important for us as Christians to follow uh, the leadership of secular authorities, governmental officials, medical officials, uh, when they speak and act and make decisions in their areas of responsibility. Uh, we see this both the Apostle Peter in uh, his epistle, uh, 1 Peter, and the Apostle Paul in the epistle to the Romans talk about submitting to government. And we do it because it's the right thing to do. Uh, government is God's plan for security in our society. Uh, we do it as a witness, uh, as Christians. And so if the government gives instructions um, in their areas of responsibility to try to halt this crisis or control this pandemic, then we should cooperate. Uh, and even though it might limit some of the activities of the church, uh, we need to think that God is bigger um, than the particular circumstances. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But the third thing I would like to say closely connected to this is we need to use wisdom. Now we know we're in a spiritual struggle. We know the devil would like to take advantage of anything like this to cause confusion and doubt. But not everything is strictly a spiritual struggle. We are to use wisdom in our everyday life. And while we absolutely trust God for protection and healing, we're not supposed to put ourselves in harm's way unnecessarily. And even if we're willing to do that for ourselves, we shouldn't put other people in harm's way unnecessarily. And so, for example, Mark 16, uh, there's the promise that we can lay hand, hands on the sick, they, they will recover. Uh, and if we drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt us. And we can take up serpents. We've understood that to be not that we should go out and handle rattlesnakes as a test of faith or go out and drink poison as a test of faith. But if something happens to us, um, some kind of attack comes upon us, whether literal or physical serpent or, uh, or, or spiritual attack, or uh, whether accidentally uh, taking something poisonous, then we trust God to protect us and deliver us. And so the same thing here. Uh, we should not walk around in fear, but we should take all necessary precautions and follow the best 
medical advice. Uh, that's simply using wisdom, and God expects us to do that. There are many uh, passages of Scripture that talk about wisdom uh, and the need for wisdom in our everyday life. Even the devil tried to tempt Jesus to jump off the temple and prove that God would miraculously protect him because after all, the Bible says the angels of the Lord encamp around uh, the believers. But Jesus rejected that and said, you should not test or tempt the Lord. In other words, while we depend upon God's protection, we're not going to go out and put ourselves in harm's way just to prove that God will protect us or to force God to protect us. Uh, we depend on the grace of God. We cannot do what God must do for us. But on the other hand, God will not do what we can do for ourselves. So if we can take some steps to protect ourselves, we should do that. Now, having said all that, let's talk about the mission of the church. Whatever happens, the church still needs to be the church. And we as individual believers still need to participate in the church. So what's the church supposed to do? We find the example in Acts chapter 2. If you read uh, Acts 2, uh, verse 42 through 47, it starts off by saying that the early believers continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking of bread and in prayers. So we need to continue to preach, to teach, to have fellowship, to worship together, to pray. Uh, we need to keep supporting the church financially. So we must find ways to do all of these things. And we can't let a crisis shut down the church. However, that does not mean that we have to continue every method or every tradition. Now, in our day, for example, we've found that church buildings are a powerful tool for evangelism and discipleship. However, the early church did not have that advantage. They had to meet primarily in homes, in small groups. Occasionally, they were able to meet in large groups. As you see in Acts 2, 3,000 were added to the church at one time. Uh, they were probably meeting outdoors. And then if you continue reading the end of Acts 2, the early church met at the temple. That would be the temple grounds, the Jewish temple, and from house to house. But by and large, uh, the church had to meet in small locations or small venues. And even today, in many places of the world, our church, the United Pentecostal Church International, uh, suffers persecution. Uh, so some of our believers have to meet secretly in homes. Some get most of their ministry online because they can't go to a group of believers. So if circumstances force us to change our methods, we can still fulfill our mission. So if we're in a situation where the government says no large meetings above such a size, well then uh, we find other ways to do church. We, we can break up and meet in small groups. Uh, with the modern technology, we can have interactive online meetings. Uh, we can have online services. And while for the long term that would not suffice, yet that is something we can do as needed. A large church perhaps can have multiple services where they break up into smaller groups and space themselves out so there's plenty of room for, for what uh, the medical personnel are calling social distancing to protect us from uh, carrying the virus or, or transmitting the virus. And even though we may feel comfortable and confident, and we're not worried, yet we do need to be concerned about the vulnerable populations, particularly the elderly, those in poor health, because we don't want to inadvertently transmit something to them uh, that maybe it wouldn't affect us or would be minor for us, but could be fatal for them. So in all of these things, let me just summarize by saying, put your trust in God. Let's go to God in prayer as a church. Let's pray for our local church. Let's pray for our international church. Let's pray for our city. Let's pray for our nation. I believe prayer can change the destiny of our city and our nation. And in the midst of all this, let's find ways for the church to be the church. In times of crisis, people's hearts often turn to God. This could be uh, although a difficult season for us, a great opportunity to bring the peace of God to troubled souls, to bring healing to the hurting and sick, and to lead many people to salvation. This crisis could be the seed of great revival. So in the midst of trouble, don't panic, but have the peace of God. 
Let's move from fear to faith. Let's continue the ministry of the church. Let's continue to support the church. And let's see what God's going to do. God bless you.